In today's video, I'm going to show you my Madden 21 red zone money passing play. If you need something for short yardage, this is my go-to play uh, in a pinch, especially if you have a quarterback that has a gunslinger in. Rodgers is the perfect quarterback for this offense in regs. Obviously, in Mutt, you're able to get Josh Allen or Brett Favre, maybe even Dante Culpepper if you want some more mobility. But what we're going to talk about is a very simple route combination. Now, this comes out of my Arizona Cardinals offensive guide, which if you want to pick up the full scheme, um, you can pick it up in the description of this video. But this play right here is absolute money in short yardage situations. We're going to be showing it to you as a two-point conversion play. Um, it's something I really like against in, in two-point conversion situations. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to come out of the nickel 55 wide, one of the most popular defenses in the, in the game, and probably growing in popularity as people are starting to realize how powerful it is. And in that same guide that has this play and the whole scheme from Arizona, we actually have our whole nickel 335, nickel 335 wide, nickel normal uh, scheme in combination with 46 bear, bear under, and 46 normal. 3-4 Bear, Big Nickel Over G, all of that. So if you want to get that 4-6 ebook, um, they're bundled together. You get both of them for the price of one of them. And that link is in the description of this video. But for those of you guys that have never met me before, my name is Cody. What we do here on the channel is we do Madden 21 tips and tricks every single day with strategies like this that are designed to show you something, some type of route concept, some type of um, blitz, some type of run defense, some type of run play, um, different tips and tricks that are designed to help you get better at Madden. So if that's something that encourages you or something that excites you and you want to get better at this game, I would highly encourage you to click the subscribe button because, again, we post four videos every single day here. We also have a TikTok uh, channel where we post 60-second uh, tips and tricks every single day over there as well. So if you want to get access to that, that's uh, that link is in the description below. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about this play from the gun spread. Now, most people say you can't run gun spread on the goal line. I disagree. I think you can. And um, this play right here has been absolute money for me. And it's a two-play scheme. The first play is the RPO read screen. And the second play that we're going to utilize is the play hitch seam. Hitch seam. Okay? And we're going to come out in our base play, which is curl wheel. You can also use this in the red zone as well. Um, this is kind of the power play. It's, in my opinion, curl wheel has the best, I, I think it's the pound for pound best play in Madden 21 with everything that you can do from it in the, in the sense of a gun spread. But, all right, let's jump right in here. So, um, this is a red zone money play. It's a two-point conversion play. And you see I've got the ball in the two-point conversion. And the play is, the, the first play we're going to start with is RPO read screen. What you're going to find here is all we're going to do is we're going to motion our left of screen tight end to the left. You see that's going to bring him in as a tight end, right? Little H-back, almost tight end wing uh, package here. What you're going to notice on this left side, let's say that they run two man under. Watch the, watch the receiver on the left side. You'll see that he is going to oftentimes, uh, oftentimes he's going to blitz. He actually stood up right there. Oftentimes he's going to blitz. This is something I like to just kind of test. Are they disciplined against the screen? If they're not disciplined against the screen, I'll throw that screen for a touchdown 100% of the time. So this is typically my first play in the red zone. I'll go to something like this. And you see there, uh, you see the cornerback there on that side is able to uh, kind of play that a little bit. But let me just show you what I mean. If the cornerback is, is, is in anything but man coverage, and we'll just force feed it a little bit here, you'll notice that oftentimes the cornerback will actually blitz off the edge, especially if they're in if they're not pass committing. But here he's kind of the, the read defender. You see that right there? If he stands like that, where you can tell that he is the RPO read defender in this play, then you will be able to see that he is going to beat man-to-man -man coverage very, very simply um, to that outside. He's going to be able to beat man. He's also going to be able to beat cover two because in cover two man and in cover two uh, zone, he is in the run fit of the play breakdown. So because he's in the run fit of the play, he's actually going to essentially, and you'll notice right here, if I, if I show the play, see how I can see him as the read defender. So if he stands up like the read defender, I could just throw this. He's automatically going to come down and it's going to be an automatic laser. Now, again, most, most formations, and I don't know why nickel 335 wide is being weird here, but when they, I think it's because I didn't man align, but when they man align their 335 wide or they get a proper alignment, you'll notice that the redefender should be the slot corner. It should be the slot corner. You'll notice this right here. Um, I'm in man to man, straight two man under. 
And I, I mean, for whatever reason, it's going to be him. But see here, see how he blitzes off that left edge? That's a quick read, quick laser, easy win, easy touchdown. The way that they have to combat that, the way that they're going to have to stop that, is they are going to have to go to some type of man-to-man -man coverage, and they are going to have to pass commit their defense. And we'll show you that right here. So I'm just going to run a simple pass commit, and you'll notice that now he's going to stay out there. You see how the defense kind of rallies to him? He's not going to be. We're not going to be able to hit that route like we would if um, if we if we weren't. The other thing that they could do. The other thing that they have the option to do is to play hard flats on the outside. And this is really what we want them to do. We want them to play hard flats on the outside. And the reason we want them to do that is because it's going to open everything up, else, everything else up for the other play that we're going to go to here in just a minute. This is hard flats out of a cover three. You notice out of a cover three, again, hard flats aren't going to do anything if they don't pass commit. If they don't pass commit, it's not going to do anything. Which also, which ironically, is also going to open up uh, running lanes for your quarterback. So this is hard flats with a pass commit. And I just want to show you why the screen is just so incredibly good. Um, and there's some things that they could obviously do to stop it, right? They could put their zone drops at five or zero, uh, which is actually very common and what we'll get into here in just a minute. But here you go. You see that flat comes out, but see how the tight end kind of blocks it, kind of blocks him? So you're, you're pretty much in a good position. And you're going to force them to run some type of cover two. They can't run cover three. They can't run cover four. They can't run. They can't run man-to-man -man coverage on this thing. So really, what they're going to have to do is by this this screen being so effective, and it's only effective flipped, by the way. Um, it's only effective flipped. By this screen being so effective on this outside, you see here. I mean, he's blitzing out of a pass commit. So this thing can really open up. If the corner doesn't blitz, it's just going to at least force them to think about it. That's what I want to get you to hear. It's going to force them to think about it. So then what they're going to do is they're either going to play man coverage, they're going to put zones out there, they're going to play Mabel coverage. That's what we want them to do. We want them to basically, out of a Tampa 2 shell, we want them to double flat. If we can get them to double flat, that is the key for this, this play right here. So what you're going to see is now I'm going to audible to hitch seam. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, left side, I'm going to smart route both of my hitches, and I'm going to take my, my guy on the right here, Shepard, and I'm going to put him on a flat route. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tight end on a little zig, and I'm going to motion him to the left again. So everything looks the same here. Nothing looks any different. The last thing that you want to do is you can take your running back, leave him on this button hook, or you could put him on an option route or a curl if you wanted to do that as well. What you'll notice, that one other thing I do like to do out of the running back, this is occasionally, I will occasionally streak him, and it does really good against the zone coverage. What you'll see on this right here, watch these little hitches. Watch these little hitches. You see you're going to get one of them. One of these curls are going to open up for you. Maybe it's the zig at the snap of the ball. You don't want to look, the hitches are your last read. They're not your first read. The first read on the play is can I throw, can I throw my, um, my tight end whip route? That's your first read every single time. Because if they're playing double flat coverage, you're going to find out that when we go to this setup right here, you have to put the tight end on a zig before you motion him over. Okay? But when we go to this setup right here, watch the tight end. Just possession. I mean, it's just wide open. It, 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 again, they're not gonna they're not gonna have enough zones from a cover two shell. So really what they're gonna need. And because of this, um, you're going to see a lot of this, right? You might see a three down line and rush, something like this right here, right? We got two vertical hooks, but remember, one of them is going to be their user. And we're going to go ahead and simulate that by putting him in a middle third because he's going to be expecting a post route or a slant route or a something, which is what we have out of curl wheel. So we go to this hitch seam play and take a look at what's going to happen here. As long as they don't have two vertical hooks, on one vertical hook on one side and one vertical hook on the other side. Watch these little hitches. Low ball, pass lead inside, they're wide open for a touchdown. Now, they're going to be man, they're going to be zone, they're going to be cover three, cover four. The only defense that can, that can potentially stop this is a Tampa two with shade coverage down. And I want to show you why that's not exactly the best strategy against this route combination. So if I take the back out of the backfield, just put him up the seam, right there, he's wide open. That's a touchdown. Now, can they use the running back? Of course they can use the running back. Of course they can use the running back, right? But again, that's going to pull one of those yellows out. So, you know, really what we're going to see 
is we're probably going to, they're going to have to use her, this guy right here. Okay, they're going to have to use her, this guy, maybe put a spy, whatever, maybe they man up the running back. There's a lot to do, and this is a quick hike of a play. And the cool part about it is everything that they do to stop hitch seam is going to make them worse against the other plays on this uh, on this little scheme here in the red zone. Now, if they have vertical hooks, you'll notice that these vertical hooks will actually, um, especially on the right side, the, the, the vertical hooks on the left side won't be as good, um, or, or the left side won't be as powerful as the right side will. Uh, and the primary reason for that is this zig, and the reason I leave the zig to the tight end is like if they go man to man, let's say they go man to man on me and they press, uh, these routes will still work against man to man, but it's just a nice little, it's, it's a secondary option. You don't have to do that. You could put the tight end on a flat and he's going to work very similarly um, to the rest of the play. Let me show you this one more time, but I just want to show you how when you put the flat routes out there, again, it could be a whip route, um, but you know, if you really want the best bang for your buck, you're going to want to put the flat routes out there. Now, you do need these specific hitch routes. You don't want them to be on curl routes because curl routes won't beat man-to-man -man in the red zone, but hitch routes will. So because they're on hitch routes right here, you're going to notice they're going to get to the back of the end zone, and I can hit either one of them. Now, if you smart route them, they're going to be a little bit more shallow. If you, if you, if you let them go a little bit deeper, they can actually get over the top of a lot of the vertical hooks. So let me just show you this really quickly. Cover two, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this right side guy, but you'll notice right there, and I can kind of just low ball and pass lead him open either to the right or to the inside of the of the play. Now let's say they run um, cover two man, right? They're gonna press, shade covered underneath, all that stuff. And what they're gonna do on the outside is they're going to play hard flats with their safeties. What you'll notice with this, and this is why I love this play so much, um, what you'll notice with this route combination is these flats will pull those purples out of the way. And it's a it's a simple low ball pass lead inside, and you're going to basically fall down in the end zone for a touchdown. I want to show you this really, really quickly here. And again, you know, most of the time, it's it's good old practice mode. You know, I mean, they're, they're getting instant sheds for whatever reason not going to happen. You're going to have edge protectors on your guys if you're playing mutt. Um, if this was a reg, you know, regs situation, I would obviously put back Tiari over on the right side of the play. But what you'll notice right here, again, step up in the pocket, pass lead inside, and you're going to aggressive catch that. Now, I, I drop that maybe once every 10 times. Um, I don't drop that very much. And a lot of the reason that you would drop it is because you haven't clicked on the receiver and actually made the play. Um, right there but we'll show you this real quick one more time but this this route combination i'm, I'm telling you guys um and if you smart route them, it works a little bit better in my opinion but you'll notice um i don't know why i motioned him over you don't want you want it spread you want it like this obviously if they run heavy middle coverage you're going to be able this is going to be open um, but what it does is just a good job of pulling these flat zones out of the way right there and that's what we're looking for right there that that aggressive catch in the red zone and, and you can make a play. Now, you can throw these if you wanted to. Um, you can also possession catch these. And so we'll show you this really, really quickly. So you see on this outside, just possession catch right there, and you're in the end zone. Um, so these are some really, really good routes, in my opinion, especially for the red zone, especially for what a lot of people are going to try to do. A lot of people in the red zone, their basic strategy, especially if they have to pass, is to basically throw a post route and maybe an outside corner route. This is something a little bit different, and this is something that is, you know, they're number, obviously they're not going to be ready for. It. But again, just pass lead it to the inside, and uh, and you'll be good. And, and, and what I mean by that is, again, man-to-man -man coverage. And let me just drive this point home a little bit. Um, when you run man, when you face man-to-man, -man, um, if you smart route these routes on the outside, it's not always the best strategy, um, especially if you're on, like, the two-yard line or the one-yard line. You just let them go at their proper depth right there. Click on. And that right there is why you need to pass lead them to the inside and aggressive catch it. And that's also why you need hitches, not curls, right? If you, if you have curls, it's a little bit easier for the defense to do that. Um, right there, we got kind of lurked because of the uh, because we didn't aggressive catch it. And then you obviously have your running back out of the backfield. But basically, whichever side they don't use or to, let it just kind of sit for a minute, and that's what we're looking for right there. 
that's the that's the animation and again you have to pass the inside if you do not pass lead these inside you will throw an interception if they're in man-to-man -man coverage like i just did on the play previously if they are if they are in man-to-man -man coverage you have to low ball and you have to pass lead inside i can't stress that enough if you don't they're gonna and again be patient with this let this set up you have to let it set up if you just force throw it quick it's not going to be there. The route's not going to be there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to man-to-man. -man, I'm going to go to hitch seam. And I'm just going to quick hike through it. I'm going to quick hike through it. Watch what happens. See see how it's not really there? The, the defense, you need to give the flat route a little bit of a split second, basically, to pull everything out of the way so that then you can hit this route um, in, in the low pass. So right here, low pass, click on, aggressive, catch it, and then obviously just truck up field, and you're going to be able to get in there. Okay, um, in my opinion, this is the best red zone play in Madden. Uh, I just feel like, and again, you can do this from curls if you want to try it, but I just feel like the curls don't, um, they don't, they go a little bit deeper. If you do curls, they will go a little bit deeper. So do know that. Just smart, I'm just smart running the curl routes here. But what you'll see is you'll see a lot more drops out of curls, in my opinion. You'll also see more picks if they have acrobat on their corners. Uh, I find that they pick the ball a little bit more uh, if you run it like that. But again, I'm just going to, you know, you can do that as well if you want a smart route curls. Um, but basically this combination, curl flat with a running back kind of putting some stress on their user in the middle of the field, you're going to be surprised at how well this is going to work for you. Um, very easy little red zone laser. So uh, let me know what you think about this. Practice it. Let me know. Uh, we have obviously a ton of other things. We did a whole red zone tutorial as run-based um, earlier. This is more of a passing-based red zone tutorial for you. Um, but scoring in the red zone is absolutely critical. And the Arizona Cardinals offensive guide not only gives you plays that are really, really good um, to get the ball down the field and to score in one play against any defense, but also gives you plays that will help you work the ball down the field and obviously be able to capitalize once you get in the red zone. Because in my opinion, one of the things you're watching in competitive Madden is that it's actually decided several games in competitive Madden. So if you need a, a really bulletproof offensive and defensive scheme and uh, would like to purchase the ebook, I would highly, highly encourage it. Um, one of the guys told me it's the best $25 that he has ever spent on this game picking up that Air Raid ebook. It's over 10 hours of video content, over 125 pages of breakdowns with one play touchdowns against every defense defenses that will i mean just destroy a lot of what most people are trying to do on the offensive side of the ball and just a phenomenal guide so i would highly recommend if you have not already picked it up if you've been following me for any length of time and you have not yet dove into the deep and picked up the air raid offense i would highly highly encourage you to do that today don't wait until tomorrow it's a really really good deal i promise you we definitely over delivered on uh, the material and i think it's very very effective for you and very still very relevant in this game if not more relevant it now than ever before you're i mean you're seeing a lot of people are switching to some of these concepts um with the way that the meta has shifted a lot of curl flats a lot of uh, fake jet pass powers no shortage of that in this ebook but it also has the the proper post routes the proper corner routes that you need to be very very effective so thank you for watching this video i really hope it was helpful i hope you can kind of understand what i'm looking at in these red zone situations obviously if they run man to man that rpo read screen is going to be money if they run zone hitch seems going to be ready they both can kind of work against both man and zone but really if i was if i knew that if i knew for a fact they were going to come out and run man i'd probably run more of the rpo read screen if i knew for a fact they were going to run zone i'd definitely run more hitch seam so those are just a couple plays in the red zone for you and how to really be effective as a passer and pass first player and be able to pass the ball in a very difficult area on the field to pass the ball. So other than that, guys, we'll be live streaming tonight at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. If you have any questions about anything, you can always text me. Um, our text message membership is amazing. Literally, it's completely free. All you got to do is text me. My number is 812-216-3644, and we release tips every single week to our text message members that are very high-level um, high, uh, tips um, that you won't really necessarily see on YouTube. So thanks for your time, guys. We'll see you on tonight's live stream.